when you hear Gregorian chants, ancient churches and monasteries in Europe may come to mind. But these chants are thousands of miles and hundreds of years closer. Tucked away on the plains of eastern Nebraska, you'll find Our Lady of Guadalupe Seminary. The sounds coming from inside the church here bring the past right into the present. To some extent, this music is from very, the early Christians, we believe, would have been singing something that resembles uh, what, what we have now and what we call Gregorian chant. Some believe that even uh, in the Jewish synagogue that they would have this same style of singing. Father Zachary Akers is a graduate of the seminary and now a priest in the fraternity of St. Peter. As a child, his mother would play Gregorian chants to help him calm down. Now, every day, he sings these chants that have been a part of the Catholic Church for centuries. And there's something uh, that uh, we as Christians in our relationship, our spiritual life, our relationship with God, that we are expressing uh, that it's, it's, it transcends just mere words. And so we pray not just with our mouth, but with singing, with our heart being uplifted to God. The chanting and the Latin lessons are part of the daily routine for the 90-some seminarians who will live and study here for seven years. Father Joseph Lee was the last student to be accepted into his class when he arrived in 2000. Now, he's the academic dean. Father Lee says the musical training and classes here are demanding. These are obligatory. These are not electives. They have to do it. Whether they went to music school before, acquired a major in the subjects, or whether they're uh, tone deaf and cannot match pitch. As part of the early, more contemplative phase of their study, the seminarians don't use their names publicly. This young man from Washington State had an extensive musical background before coming to the seminary starting with playing the violin at age three and the piano shortly after. Still, learning Gregorian chant wasn't without its difficulties. One of the things that did take a while to learn uh, was how to pray the music. Uh, that was a big difference from most uh, settings in the secular music world. Uh, it's a performance performing music, whereas here we're singing sacred music, Gregorian chant. We're not necessarily performing the music, we are praying the music. Those prayers are now being heard by people well beyond the walls of the church. A record company, De Montfort Music, approached the fraternity of St. Peter about making a recording of Gregorian chants. So they gathered 12 of the most musically talented graduates from the seminary, priests from across the world, and produced Requiem. It's a Latin word that means rest. And um, for this album, it's a selection of music that is uh, simply the Catholic Church's uh, musical list for a, a funeral mass. We all experience death, and we all experience uh, the, the, our, our return to uh, our maker, our creator. And uh, this is something that's very transcendent, and I think the music really expresses this reality as well. Father Akers and Father Lee are both among those participating in the Requiem Project. The recording seemed to strike a chord when it was released last spring spending 13 straight weeks at the top of the classical music charts. The Gregorian chant has found a new audience. It's universal. It's, it's a, a unifying, bonding element that transcends fads, transcends fashions, transcends geography, transcends time and it's able to uh, unite people regardless uh, of their race or 
who they think is gonna win the World Series or what kind of food they, they enjoy eating. Maybe it's not such a surprise that a recording of priests praying Gregorian chants has become a success. After all, they've been practicing for hundreds of years. Gregorian chant is not something that is just uh, uh, in, of olden days that, that's being sung at some small uh, monastery in Spain. This is something that is very much a part of our life as Catholics. <laughs> 